Okay, welcome everyone and welcome to the Facebook group, the International Brotherhood of Palavans. Uh, this is a group honoring safe, drug-free, old school, ancient warrior physical fitness, the martial arts, professional wrestling, old school professional wrestling, and all sorts of, of just honest, drug-free, competition sports of all kinds whether it be weightlifting powerlifting uh kettlebells uh whatever martial arts i said that already uh you know it's just it's a man cave in a in an alpha male's locker room let's put it that way on cyberspace on the internet i want to welcome donald boost donald boost welcome to the show and most of all I want to welcome back my very special guest, co-host, and very close friend, the one and only Jeff Zambello. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? Very well. Very good day. Okay. Very excited to be here. That's right. And I'm me too. Now, seven lucky bells to chase away the evil spirits. And that's the hotel bell from the Hilton on Polifoy Road. In Hasbro Kais, New Jersey, the official on location office of Jeff Sambello. And uh, well, it's not from the hotel, it's, it's, it's a hotel quality bell. So, anyway, I am pouring some craft beer. I think Donald Boost would appreciate this. This is my first time trying this. It is chocolate peanut butter porter by Sweet Baby Jesus Company. And I'm going to pour it right now. All right. Porter is like stout, but uh, I believe it is made from malted barley instead of roasted barley. And uh, it's got a nice head on it, and it looks really good. It's very dark, uh, almost black. Let me smell it. Oh, I smell peanuts. I, so, yeah, it's really, it looks really nice on, on video. Look at that. It's like, uh, it's got a head that hangs in there like Guinness Stout. A porter is, uh, like I said, malted barley instead of uh, roasted barley. And uh, it really does smell like peanut butter. Mm. Mm. So, so when the head dies down, I'll take a sip. And I just want to show the folks. Uh, now, a, a religious uh, a fanatic a zealot that is part of the craft beer snob uh, uh, Hoity Toity Group refuses to purchase or drink this because he said it's blasphemous because of the name. Well, then he's a judge. You know, these, these people are going to get a life. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> You're telling so, me. A lot of issues. I don't know whether it's a short penis or you know, whatever. But he's got some serious problems. That that's what he's all worried about. <laughs> 
Do you think, do you think, he thinks that, people like him thinks that God has no sense of humor and, and he, that he lives in a box. He, he actually yeah. thinks God would, would, would not find this amusing that, that, you know, you know, to, to call craft beer, sweet baby, Jesus company, chocolate, peanut butter, pork. I mean, come on. There's more. What's wrong with that? At least they're saying sweet baby Jesus, unlike the, some of the other, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a politically correct word so we don't get censored off this uh, YouTube or whatever. Uh, radical groups uh, <laughs> that wouldn't honor uh, our Lord and Savior in such a favorable way. I mean, I, I mean, we're, 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 between the lines. look, with all the real problems in our country and in this world and, and possibly in the uh, it, what is that little cocksucker doing on the beer and wine show the first if he's so pious then tell him to become a mormon uh who, who doesn't drink or uh, drink drink coffee you know drink liquor and drink coffee or smoke cigarettes or whatever if he's that pious and ask him if he's had premarital sex well i know he i know he with a woman and not a boy i know he i know he does he, Bible camp. I know he does special shows about uh, bourbon whiskey and scotch and and and, uh, and rum and I know he drinks lots of hard liquor and he yeah. drinks he drinks lots of uh, uh, dessert wines and uh, I mean he sucks whiskey down like a camel uh, 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 sucks water and but uh, but but he is he says this name is blasphemous. For a a craft beer oh. company to use that name, wow. so uh, <laughs> James, we should all listen to him. Well, follow his example of, of hypocrisy. Well, well, he he got annoyed at me because I used the word uh, uh, um, evangelical oh, zealot. Uh, yeah, well, uh, that's what he is. Uh, uh, he uh, what a zealot. Yeah, a zealot. A zealot. Look it up, people. It's one thing, James. I think I've mentioned this before. The bigger the cross around the neck, the bigger the hypocrite. Well, don't, hey, don't TV evangelists usually show off like that? They they wear a white suit. They're all in white, like they're Ricardo. Like you know, it's kind of funny, <coughs> but humble people, when they get married, they get, you know, simple gold bands, you know, the wedding ring. Yeah. But how come these uh, televangelists, they have these, all these diamond encrusted wedding bands? Like, well, uh, um, the yeah, they yeah, like they they dress like Ricardo Montalban on Fantasy Island. They're all in white. They even got white shoes. They 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 prance around. They dance. They do the moonwalk and everything. And and they uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, yakety yak. God's a talking back. Remember, uh, 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 Steve Martin did that 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 uh, spoof that uh, satire about TV yeah. evangelists. And and you know what? And they make believe they hate so old lady secretaries. They give the young uh, voluptuous uh, uh, woman uh, as uh, their personal assistants. Right. They have interns like Jim Baker they, did. They, they have like interns. Middle-aged married woman to become their uh, secretaries. Right. That that are experts at taking dictation, if you know what I mean. But, yeah. But uh. The that thing, twenty-six year old, uh, you know. Hold on, that was funny. Time for for a little honeymooners, uh, Thelma Bell. And also, we we need old-fashioned jingle bells, the levity bells. We need some old, uh, paying of respect, homage to the ancient masters too. Hold on, the world's largest and loudest jingle bell. Okay, and old-fashioned police whistle. See that? <whistles> Here's to all the hypocrites out there, the, the sanctimonious, um, uh, holier-than-thou uh, yeah. uh, people, um, pusillanimous pipsqueaks. Um, what's the other word besides sanctimonious? Uh, uh, self-righteousness that 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 do other things 
that are not too cool with, you know, with uh, uh, religion, but they get offended by the name Sweet Baby Jesus, you know, uh, chocolate peanut butter porter, which happens to be, folks, delicious. I did it's, mark my words. Um, this guy, Tomlin's going to get even with him because it always does. Look up Michael Avenatti. He thought, you know, he, uh, you know, the liberal media, right, was CNBC or CNN or, right. you know, all these stations, right? they thought he was holy as in Dow, right? Now, you know all the corruption he's, he's facing, right? Well, he's in hot water right now. 335 years in prison, right? So, Yikes. this guy, this hypocrite that doesn't like a sweet baby Jesus uh, uh, beverage products, yeah, be it right. You know, it's only a little label on a sticker and a bottle. But don't worry, <laughs> this guy will get caught on, on a, you know, some primetime television show like 2020 or Dateline when they do a, you know, one of those stings, you know, with a prostitute, you know, that the woman police, the undercover police woman, you know, solicit them for prostitution. And then all of a sudden she takes it back to the Motel 6. Right. And in the closet and in the bathroom are uh, like, like six. Like a half a dozen uh, uh, police officers ready to arrest them. Don't worry. Well, when 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 I was before, when I went on the show that I invented called Fandango Friday, because I felt that the people were, were way too serious and way too stiff on their craft beer review shows. So I I figured, you know, gee, everybody knows about Casual Friday in the office. Let's yeah. try Fandango Friday with with reviewing alcoholic beverages. And and the rule was, there was really no rules. You can bring anything you want, wine, or whiskey, rum, whatever, or beer. Yeah. Right. And you can bring a musical instrument if you can play it. And it, it was supposed to be a, a day, a, a show to loosen up and have fun. Well, yeah, guess what? The they don't want to loosen up and have fun. They were so stiff and rigid and anal retentive that they ganged up on me uh, uh, like a tribunal of judges. And they were very judgmental because they have no life. They're, they're geeks. They call themselves beer geeks. Now, if you can't loosen up. Self-proclaimed elite. Right. Now we're getting somewhere. Self-proclaimed elitists. Now, if they can't loosen up and have fun on a Friday, then they have problems, man. They they don't have a life. <clears throat> I mean, literally. And and the Emerald Men... Like, you know why? Because their wives at home are looking for guys like us. Well, they, if they have wives or girlfriends, they, they obviously don't have alpha males with them. You know, right. and... Uh, like uh, certain women call other men, uh, other single men up for lunch. That's right. That's right, and and and, and um, they, um, you know, they really took offense to hearing an honest person tell the truth, like myself, and uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. I, I I just had to leave. And the Emerald Mystic beat the hell out of him on on a live uh, YouTube video. The Emerald Mystic came to the rescue of James P. Madonna and myself, and he did a number on him, and and there was like I think there's there's almost like a hundred views of the Emerald Mystics video because that they, they got all bent out of shape because the Emerald Mystic named names and he hammered and hammered and hammered and he hit below the belt in the old Kulyuns in the in the in the Balinis and they couldn't handle it. And you know what? The Emerald Mystic is not done with them. Actually, I'm I'm not done with them because I just I just tore them a new asshole just now. But, but there's something, oh, by the way, this tastes really good, Jeff. I, I highly recommend to people, if you like, you know, alpha male craft beer, this is the way to go. But now, Jeff Sambello's. Now, speaking of coming to the rescue. Yeah. Did, did our friend Krampus need to come to the rescue? The little unsupervised fatty arbuckles. Uh, who climb inside the eye screen station. There's they, only they one... Where they or supervise. Now, Krampus used to be on this Holy Rollers uh, uh, hard, hard whiskey show 
called Dawn Breakers. He used to he used to uh, drop in on him like at six a.m. and and he and the guy banned Krampus because Krampus was too harsh. So this is the Holy Roller that now on at the buffet today, the Royal Hibachi buffet. There was only one strange kid. It's always a little boy that causes mischief. And he was... It's not the kid's fault. It's the parents' fault. So, yeah. Uh, so this audience knows, you know, James and I are very nice and loving people. <laughs> we just have to call it the truth. So we're not, like, uh, attack on little kids or anything. When we say these things, it's about the parents. Well, I, I attack mo modern-day parenting. Because a, a child, if a child is in someone else's place of business, they should not be unsupervised. If they're a minor, there should be a, a, a guardian or a parent with them. They shouldn't be diving into the ice cream freezer uh, like this little kid that was rubbing his friggin' nose as he was scooping ice cream. His, his schnozola, his proboscis was hanging you know, over, and I was watching him closely to make sure he wasn't dripping because I would have freaked out. Now, oh, you mean radioactive um, blueberry ice cream? <laughs> oh, no, that wasn't blueberry. That tasted like cotton candy. It was horrible. I, I, I took one little spoonful and I go, this is not for me. <laughs> the, the green, the radioactive green Chernobyl turned out, to, uh, ice cream turned out to be like a French vanilla with pistachios in it. It was actually quite good. But but the blueberry, no, no, it was like it was like carnival cotton candy, you know, like that 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 you know that da 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, now seriousness. Jeff Zambello's muscle and ministry with a message. He has special events coming up, and they're coming real soon. And take it away, Jeff Zambello, and let's update the people on these fantastic events. So next week, a week from tomorrow, I'll uh, be in the province of Prince Edward Island, one of my students, and um, actually two of my students, but one in particular, this young man. He's a father of three, 29 years old. He's in the 242 pound class. He training, he trains, he trains with like 655 pound deadlift. Um, he does two reps with 635. He does four reps with 605. Um, so four reps times three sets uh, with 605. He's gonna go 700 pound uh, deadlift uh, with three judges there. Wow, three and judges. Wow. He's going to be bench pressing about 460. And it's all unequipped. And uh, I'm very proud of this young man. This guy is so enthusiastic about training. I get five to ten messages every single day from this young man. And because he's so excited about training and competing. I got to tell this kid to slow down and take, take my Well, day. you're his. You're his mentor. You're his guiding light, and he looks up to you. And you know something? If you turn, if you turn him into a champion, and he starts winning well, medals, national champion next year in 2020, he's gonna go for an 800 pound deadlift. You know what? So equipment like these jerks, these little fatos. You know, he's powerlifted as a guy of high jacks in the 50s or the 40s. Mm -hmm. This isn't one. Of, this guy's got veins. All over his arms, his chest, his shoulders, everything, right? He's lean. This kid has a 32 inch waist at 242 pounds. Wow. 32 inch waist. And, anyways, um, no, this kid's gonna be breaking 800 pounds in 2020. So he has a real V shaped torso. I mean, he's like yes. V. No, he's huge. And he's, he's a tough, tough kid, but he's humble. And one of the things I like about this kid, right, is that he doesn't walk around the gym like a tough guy because he doesn't need to. And he talks to everybody. He's a kind person. He appreciates a second chance at life. And I'll tell you, I, I have good talk to this kid. This kid listens to me. And he's going to have a good, good life. 
He makes me so proud, and I call him my adopted son. That's how proud of you. Well, young man. your advice is second to none. There, there is, there's very few people that can turn a person's life around like you, because you're teaching him uh, longevity in physical fitness as opposed to short term. You know what I mean? Like, I, and, and it's not because I get, you know, I'm a paid coach or I'm paid this or that. I receive nothing as full of money, monetary payment. I receive gold. Just like I receive your time, James P. Madonna. This man gives me his time. And I'm going to say something. And I don't care if James uh, gets, uh, you know, blushes in the face or whatever, but very few people give a rat's ass about most other people. James P. Madonna, he's my brother with capital letters because he gives me his time in capital letters. Time is something one cannot get back. But when you invest you. in time, God, the creator, sees that. I'm very touched. I'm very touched. I, I, I want you to take a, a, a sip, a big sip, a gulp of that sweet baby. Jesus! There. I am. It's wonderful. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very well, touched. I, you the hypocrites. I thank you the for. The uh, hypocrites in the centers. Uh, from Silicon Valley, all the censorship. Well, take another sip, James, for uh, Mr. Zuckerberg. Uh -huh. Well, the show I did last week with uh, Gary W. Owens, we discussed in depth the uh, corporate fascist censorship that's going on. Like, and they're really trying to. To dummy us all up and take away our our right to a, a First Amendment right of freedom of speech and, and and they really don't like people talking on social media because they want to brainwash us like lemmings like not like, gonna happen. Not we we're streetwise. We're street people. They can't fool us. Hold on. Speaking of brainwashing, speaking of like uh, Wall Street and big retail in America. Here they are, the the big jumbo cubic zirconia stud earrings. Only one dollar for this beautiful oh. pair. Look at them. Look at them. One dollar. These they're they're they're. Uh, excuse me. No, they're not burping. That was me. They're. <laughs> that's a good burp. That's, they, a, that's a, a sweet baby Jesus burp. Yeah. Hey, if Howard Stern can burp and make all those millions, so can I. Make millions. So, yeah. Right. So you get it. Pretty white to boot. Yeah, now look at that. Look at these cubic zirconias. Now, who needs to spend thousands of dollars on a stone from South Africa that's not even a precious gem anymore? And with inclusions, with imperfections, when you can get a nice, gorgeous pair of cubic zirconias and not get ripped off by Jared or Zales or 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 K jewelers. Look at that. Look at that, beautiful. Now, I'm pro I I'm keeping these. At the reason why I keep showing these is I'm trying to prove a point that Americans are suckers, they're lemmings, and they, they, they watch TV too much and they believe advertisement. And the same thing goes on in the- in, You're imprisoned in credit card debt. Yes. And, and the fit- the Wall Street, <coughs> zealots, zealots. Now we, we, but we're not hypocrites like the zealots, but we believe in the physical, in safe, drug-free, physical fitness world, not the phony baloney physical fitness industry, because we're not part of that. I don't. I just want to tell everyone, I don't manufacture exercise equipment, nor do I sell it. I do not conduct seminars. Uh, I, uh, I don't. I don't own a gym. I do not compete with judges, but Jeff does, and I'm proud of him, and I'm his biggest fan. Jeff Sambella does compete, and he enjoys it. And he's got, and I'm very happy about his protégés, that he's turning their lives around. 
It's incredible. I'm telling you, what Jeff's doing, he does, he's been doing Bible study for many years. He knows scripture. What, what Jeff's involved in is the real salt of the earth. He's a pillar of society. And um, he's not, a, he's not, a, he doesn't cuddle. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> now, now I'm laughing. He doesn't cuddle. Cuddling is actually good. Actually, uh, how he, the fuck's the <laughs> Now, I now for those of you that don't know, I <laughs> I posted. I put this should be on Jack's joke shop. I posted a video of 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 people. That, oh, me pot of gold! Oh, me pot of gold! They get the, oh, me <laughs> pot of gold. He gets. <laughs> I have to compete, so I have to be. I have to be pussy nice. And so, but but James and I know what we're talking about. So diddly, we don't stop the innuendo. Diddly diddly do. May I cuddle with you for a mere one hundred dollars cash? There's a there's a uh, there there are people. There are people out there that are offering cuddling sessions for a hundred dollars, which means it's not real affection. They're just doing it for money, and and, and since it's not sexual intercourse. They get away with it now. Uh, uh, you heard what Mario Petrus said. I would, if, if somebody is is hugging me and rubbing me down like that, my hand is going to be in between her legs. It, there's no <laughs> way. I, you know, I couldn't do that. Have somebody rubbing me down like that, and I, well, unless she was, well, if she was ugly, she wouldn't. I wouldn't allow her to touch me, but. You know, if she was halfway decent and she's rubbing me and hugging and her hands are everywhere, what the hell with that cuddling crap, you know? No I'm, hormones and, you know. <laughs> but anyway, that was real funny. It's on my profile for those. Yeah, it's, just, it's just walk room talk, just guy talk. You know, I mean, I don't, we don't do it. We're not in the business of of giving, offering cuddling uh, services. These are other people, and we're, and you know, that's why we're laughing. Uh, it's, yeah, a, you know, and we should laugh. If people, if they want to judge us, they can judge us all they want. But you know what? I'm still going to compete. That's and right. I, with all my muscles, I will never show up to a competition with skinny arms or skinny legs. Now, I got something special to say. Uh, a very old friend, uh, Vern Uvizian, has joined the show also. Sure. So now, I've known Vern from since the early 1980s, and I want to show Vern something that personally that she gave me that came from her, you know, her mom's uh, company in Mineola, Long Island. She sold. Um, concertinas and accordions imported Ooh. from Italy and and most of her clientele was in the Midwest where they have polka bands you know Ooh. Polish and German you know the uh, you know roll out the barrel you know she, she's too, I think Polish girls are so pretty she's too fat for me you know anyway the Jews harp came from Vern in the 1980s it's made in Italy and I still have it Cool. I, I still have it. It's in. It's still in the same perfect condition it was when she gave it to me in the early 1980s. And I'm going to play it. got it perfect condition i can play it better than ever so that's a a, 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 a salute to Vern and her late uh, mother that owned the company uh i think her name was faith i could be wrong i think well, that, but that's not important my training yes. i've been doing some hiking and some speed walking uh outside it's the uh, the snow's all gone uh, we're getting nice warm temperatures up here lots of sunshine so yeah i can't wait 
Yeah, you know what? Spring is yeah, the death. You would do two games. Yeah. I mean, you have hundreds of miles of, uh, of uh, walking paths, walking trails. There's lots of walking trails. The weather is becoming ideal, even though the temperature has been dropping sharply at night. Spring is in the air, and the uh, the trees, the dogwood trees, have bloomed. And uh, pretty pretty soon, the two lips. I'm not talking about a labia uh, or or, or uh, uh, a two. Actually. The two lips will be. <laughs> will be will be. Hold on. We'll be in bloom. Thelma, please step into the dining room with my coffee. I would like two lumps. You'll keep on ringing that bell and you'll get two lumps. All right. Yeah, the, the two lips will be in bloom. And over here, people have a competition on who has the most elaborate, gorgeous tulip display in front of their house. Say, people are very competitive here in suburban land, suburbia. You know they do the same thing around Christmas time, Jeff. They they compete with the with the lighting, and uh, oh look at my house! My house is the most gorgeous around. Oh, it's wonderful, you know. So that that's what. Yeah, they, but but whenever like the, the old lady lives next door, or the you know the elderly lady lives next door, they never they never shovel her walkway or wish her Merry Christmas. But oh look at me, like Jerry Seinfeld with the with the fur yeah. coat. Look at my Christmas lights at my house, but I will. But I won't wish my neighbors Merry Christmas, and I won't shovel the snow for the elderly lady next door. They won't. They won't talk to their neighbors. They won't get to know their neighbors. They won't try to help people in need. They won't do shit. But they will put a ton of flashing LED lights in front of their house. In front of their house to get attention so everybody stares at their house and say oh how gorgeous your house is but yeah. that's that's to me that's a phony christmas spirit that's well jesus called those out called, called out the pharisees and said boy you look your cup looks nice and white and clean on the outside but inside your cup it's all filled and death and rot yes and just like those Christmas lights hide the fact that they probably have lots of uh, poopy stains in their underwear. Yeah, their their underwear is probably stained, oh, sure. uh, shit stain on their underwear. But they but they're wearing uh, a, a, a custom made uh, arm. Um, the little shrubs. And yeah, they got yeah. they got the azalea bushes and they got the Japanese maple tree and they got the they got everything they got you know you name it they have it and uh, yeah. uh, uh, their their lawns are manicured to perfection. Sure. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, Jeff, after Silvio said, huh? Silvio said, to Kramer. Oh yeah, uh -huh. oh love me, love me. me. I'm so beautiful. Kiss me, kiss me. Need me, need me. Yeah, that was, that was very accurate uh, 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 satire about celebrities and people in the spotlight. You know that that you know, and you know what happens to movie stars when they're they're no longer wanted anymore because because they're getting older. Is they 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 have a meltdown. Mm. A lot of the a lot of the stars, the female mega stars. Uh, of of le legend, you know when they when they started getting less less roles and you know they're they're they were not in the spotlight anymore because somebody younger came around. They, yeah, they didn't they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to. It's like you know it's like a sports um, um, celebrity. You know a sport a, a professional athlete's career is short. It's not that long, and mm. and and even if it was. Even if you took care of your health and you had longevity, let's say, let's talk about somebody I admire a lot. I watched his documentary on Netflix, Ted Williams of the Boston Red Sox. Ted Williams, even though he went into the, he was in two wars, um, World War II, uh, I heard he was an outstanding pilot uh, in, the, in the Navy, I think, uh, and he was in the Korean War. But, you know, he, he saw, he actually didn't see 
a tremendous amount of action between the, the both wars, but he went. But yeah. Ted Williams, despite the fact that he had a leave of absence for the military, uh, was pretty much the best baseball, the best hitter in baseball that ever lived. Uh, huh. and, and he wrote a book and he had everything down to a science and he played after the age of 40 he was still playing but you know he was on his way out but yeah. okay you wow. have long yeah, he, he, yeah you know he stuck it out you have longevity and uh you know you but you could but you got you got to have a plan for retirement you have that you have to have a plan for what happens afterwards and what i'm trying to say is if you have a career where you're famous and you and you and you're rich and you have no plan for afterwards you know what if what if i get injured uh what if uh they don't want me anymore and some somebody young takes my place uh and if you don't have a plan you you, you got to be uh, steps ahead and um uh, now speaking of steps ahead after prince edward island there's a, an event coming up in Dover, New Hampshire. Am I correct? New Hampshire. Yep. Uh, cannibal uh, meat. Seacoast uh, Sea Coast Cannibal Club. And uh, really looking forward to that. Very much looking forward to that. That's on May 11th. Saturday, May 11th. That'll be you. That will be. I can't wait. I've been training so hard for that. And uh, I tell you, man, I'm all healed up. Listen, the fact that you you rehabilitated yourself and you're all healed up because of what you have done with your protocol is is absolutely amazing. Uh, there should be a book written about it. I think maybe someday there will be, but I think that your testimonial. I'm sorry, your testimonial. <laughs> your the fortitude. Your intestinal fortitude, your testimonial of how what you did with your injury and how you made a huge comeback, and now, now if you start really excelling with the uh, uh, kettlebell competitions, forget it. That story. I enjoy life. I enjoy competing. I love training, and when I compete, and I plan on doing a lot of kettlebell competitions this year. And um, and uh, I just every time I go to a kettlebell competition, it's like Christmas morning when you open up the presents. It's just it's so much fun. There's so much positive energy. You're dealing with great athletes. This kettlebell sport is the hardest sport I've ever done in my life um, because the last ten minutes nonstop, with only one hand switch. That's incredible and it's more of a, a mental toughness because you have this little quiet voice in the back of your head that says oh you can put the kettlebell down and everybody will understand no 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 you fight that voice and that's how you win anybody who gets on that kettle on that platform male female young old whatever right and finishes the 10 minute set is a is a winner well because you have heart you know you, you have heart to 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 suck it up and and and, and you do is in training and condition your mind with discipline you know and yeah but don't don't go give, give away your secret but you have a secret weapon in your training for the kettlebell competition that you told me off uh off the air but you keep that a secret that's okay. This is, the, this is the brotherhood of power bond. And I want, I'm, uh, I'll talk about it because everybody has their own method. And that's what we're all about here on power bonds. We're all right. helping each other and, and not uh, extorting each other or, or whatever. We're all here to help. Okay. All right. If you feel comfortable uh, talking about your your training for this, that's fine. It's, you, know, you can do that. Um, uh, if it's okay with you, because you're, you're, you're the boss. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Tell, tell the people. Uh, in, a humbly, in a humble way. Yeah. And, and if people want to open up a 
you know, a discussion forum here. I really welcome that because uh, I can program. I I can always learn something from someone else with real life experience. That Ken Thiessen, who I greatly respect. Yes. Anyways, um, so um, let me see. In the mornings, I do my CTT, which is which James and I have patented uh, is centrific, centrifugal, centrif sorry, centrifugal torque training. And I do that with uh, such hammer, steel club, uh, mace. Then after that, and, and I also use Persian meals and um, wooden Indian clubs for mobility, whatever. And um, I'm just trying to speed this along. Then I'll do kettlebell sport training. Um, I uh, took a, a certification class in 2016 at the Niagara Kettlebell Sport Open, and the kettlebell uh, champion uh, who taught it was Denis Vasilov uh, from Russia, and he's a master of sport, and he also has a master's degree in um, kinesiology and all this other stuff. Oh, wow. Sports cool. education. And he's also had this master of sport in powerlifting. So he was a world champion powerlifter before he became a kettlebell sport um, um, uh, master of sport. And um, so that's the highest designation you get. And um, um, so anyway, it's his course, and, and so it's all about programming. And so today, for example, I did um, five minutes on my left arm uh, at 20 reps per minute. Uh, then you rest for five minutes and you do your right arm for five minutes. And I went at a pace of 20 reps per minute. With I walked at the top because you have to walk. That, that, that's how you get a point. Um, you have to fixate. It's called fixation. Um, uh, for every rep to count. So that went well. That means Sunday I will do uh, a 10 minute set uh, non stop. Um, and then I start my cycle all over again uh, for next week. I, I, I train Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. And then, so Wednesday will be, um, you train for multiple sets up to 12 minutes. Um, uh, say three four minute sets or or, or um four three minute sets or six two minute sets as long as you get to twelve minutes or you get there's different ways of programming. So then that's the morning. So then um in the afternoon on my weightlifting days that's my Kelba days and my C T C days and my power from there. Um, then I go to my commercial gym. I do a lot of cable work. Everything is unilateral, single arm. So um, I'll do a lot of cable work for my rear delts uh, at different angles. Um, it's very important to switch the angle so you hit different muscles. Uh, different parts of the tendons, the joints, the rotator cuff, and do a lot of rear delt work. Then I do front delt work. I, I do a, I work out, I do single arm cable stuff, um, unilateral exercises, um, for 45 minutes every Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Then I do the weights. So then I walk over to the dumbbell rack. And then I do my push exercises. So I do incline dumbbell um, uh, presses, like with um, a single arm, um, usually 15 to 20 reps each arm. So multiple sets. But I get a great burn, a great pump. Uh, it's also great on the joint because 15 to 20 reps, that is very nice on your joint. It doesn't destroy your joint. And you get all the fresh blood, you get the lubrication, the, the synovial fluid, and the, and, the, and the mobility. It's great. And then I'll go do bilateral exercises uh, after that. 
Anyways, that's my afternoon workout. And then I finish off on those days with about 20 to 30 minutes of incline treadmill um, at a very fast walking speed with a steep incline and I push myself. And I push, I break through mental barriers and um, it's, it's wonderful. And then on my non weightlifting days, um, I do an hour of cardio on those days. And um, so that's, that's it. It's all basic, natural stuff, and it just feeds my soul, my spirit, my mind, my hormones. Uh, it generates um, dopamine, uh, serotonin. Um, well, your adrenaline's flowing too. All that stuff. And and, and, and your te it. your testosterone is maximized from from the deadlifting. And the deadlifting I do on Sunday. And when I do deadlifting, I do sets of eight. I usually put you know three plates on, which is just I call them three wheels. It's just three fifteen. You know, I'm not gonna pretend. Oh, I do a five hundred pounds uh, sets. You know, oh crap! I'm fifty four years old. I work up with 315 pounds. I do sets of eight reps. Why? Because when you do sets of eight reps with a nice, moderately heavy weight against eight reps, not three reps, not five reps where it's heavy and it's, it's going to ruin your back. It's going to wear out your, you know, all the discs and everything. I don't need a herniated disc at this point in my life. So eight rep sets with three fifteen, and I don't even count the number of sets. I just I I could probably do anywhere from ten, fifteen sets, and because I'm walking on the gym, and then I'll go attack it. I'll do another set of eight, and I'll do some other exercises, whether it's pull ups or my you know uh, you know lateral or dumbbell work or whatever can work, and then I'll go do another set of eight with three fifteen. Because we have five different platforms. So it isn't like I'm hogging up the gym with my deadlift bar. No, no, no. There's opportunities for other people at other stations. And anyways, and that's what I do on Sundays. Yeah. And I'll tell you, man, my traps, my lats, everything, my hamstrings, I'm so pumped up. In it. And then the next day at work on Mondays, it's beautiful. I'm all sore, but in a good way. A good soreness like that. Healthy soreness. Oh yeah, it, not sharp pain from an injury. I'm burning calories sitting at my desk. Yeah, not 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 sharp pain from a from a muscle no, tear or an injury. Bad. We're talking about a good soreness. With good form, with my shoulders behind the bar when I'm pulling it off the ground, not in front of the bar where I'm using my lower back. No, when you put your shoulders behind the bar, you're using your legs. You push your legs through the floor. Yeah. Anyways, that's enough of that. That's enough and of that. that your grip. I always use a double overhand grip. Well, so uh, oh, you know, you know what I saw? Yeah. When, I, when I go over 400 pounds, I have to use a mixed grip. You know, when you put you, 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 one hand uh, is over the bar, and the other one's under the bar. Anyways, that's a whole different thing. But I try to use yeah. double overhand grip to strengthen my grip for CTT, the kettlebell sport, and to help with the deadlifts. Mm -hmm. And um, it's worked out very, very well. My forearm muscles right now are the biggest and most cut up they've ever been mm -hmm. in my entire life. I wish I had these forearms when I was in my 20s and 30s. They're like Popeye. I love, oh right. man, I'll tell you, all this training, all this old school training, you know, especially with the Persian meals and everything, mm. I love it. Well, between the between your forearms and your and your horseshoe uh, triceps, you 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 know you when you wear a, a tight uh, a, a short sleeve shirt, uh, uh, nylon or whatever, you know, it really stands out. Because I've seen some of your photos, and you you you've made a vast improvement. Uh, uh, um, 
Well, ju just to give people some consumer advocate tips, um, I was in the store five below, and they were selling these uh, four or five pound miniature sandbags. Hey, folks, you don't have to spend five dollars a pop for these little miniature sandbags. Just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get a ten pound sack of play sand for a few dollars. And you know, you want to fill up your Bulgarian bag or your sandbag or whatever you want to do with it. And you know, you don't need to go to a sporting goods store and get ripped off. You'll you'll always get the best consumer advocate tips from yours truly and Jeff Zambella. Now, speaking of Bulgarian bag, you know that uh elitist snobs are severely lacking a sense of humor. I said to an elitist snob in the fitness industry with a thin mustache, I said, wouldn't it be funny if you took an old Bulgarian woman and put her in a loadable Bulgarian bag and started swinging her around? He says, that's very offensive. How dare you say I would do such a thing? Uh, uh, what if that was your, your mother uh, uh, that some, someone was swinging around? I, I said, that was a joke. Well, somebody called up, and your mother answered the phone, and uh, this guy was in a highway, but we won't mention that. Yeah. So go ahead with your story. No, the, the point is it was a joke. I, I'm not going to really, I'm not advocating putting cable ties around an old Bulgarian woman's uh, wrists and no, ankles. Absolutely not. I'm not a good to humor people. We're not the president of the United States. We're not the president of IBM or... That's normal. Right. We're normal people. We'd like to have a good time. Yeah, I mean, and these are the people that will never be able to sit in a, in a gym locker room with alpha males and and joke around and tell stories. You yeah. forget about that. And and it's the same thing with the with the time. with the religious yeah. with the religious fanatic zealot that refuses to buy or taste sweet baby Jesus uh, craft beer. Because it is blasphemous. It's a blasphemous name. I have a question with this church. Did this person ever fight with the special forces or go to Afghanistan? Or no. To fight the war? No, hell no. No, he this never. No. Why are they so special? And, Why? And he goes to church all the time, but I don't Why? think. Anybody go to church. But I don't think he's, in, he's ever involved in any charitable organization. Who cares if he goes to church? Everybody. Oh yeah, he's always saying, "Oh, I'm off the church. I gotta go. I gotta run, folks." I'm he's playing because of his uh, his friend's wife. He's off the church. I'm know. off the church. <laughs> uh, 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 if he's such a pious person, how come the German shepherd across the street is always snarl snarling at him? We're ready to bite him in the ass. <laughs> I mean, I mean, usually nice church going people. The dogs usually like you. You know, I don't have any problem with dogs. They all human, James. We all sin every day. Every single one of us. She told me when this guy is driving home from work and somebody cuts him off, he doesn't say a little swear word under his breath or he doesn't get mad and say, oh, you know, this and that. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Crap. I'm sure he does more. Hey, if he's drinking hard liquor at 6 a.m. Oh, yeah. Every day. I don't drink I don't drink scotch and bourbon uh, at the crack of dawn and, and do a show called, oh at the, called Dawn Busters every, every freaking like uh, five thirty in the morning. Do a live a live show about whiskey. I'm sure his, I'm sure his religious wife must love him with the with the whiskey breath at six in the morning. Well, he's um, he's divorced, but that that's besides the point. Oh yeah, see, there you go. I just told you. You know what I'm talking about? And why is he divorced? Hey, uh, hey, well, well, hold on. I'm blessing people. I'm blessing people with my bourbon and scotch. Hold on. I'm using the uh, I'm using the the red belt. You know when the priest, you know, goes, you know, wh whack, waves that thing around and shoots out holy water. Hey, hey. All right. I love that when they do it against the casket. I love hey, that sound. Hey, 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 I think I think it's a funny joke if somebody brought a couple caskets uh, in a sporting event and says, I want to do a real deadlift with, with corpses in it. Ah, uh -huh, that's good. 
I want to use a couple corpses in the, in the casket. One in each hand. I'll, de I'll deadlift. That is awesome. Let's just make a little picture. Because you're pretty good at caricatures. Um, especially with this beautiful new award. Um, but anyway, um, you should get like, a couple of caskets on the end, on each end of the barbell. Is a the deadlift only event. Wait a minute. A bamboo pole with two two rings uh, over each casket, and you stick it through each end of the bamboo pole, and With you... two urns, yeah, two urns on the end of each. Or the, the well, and then you could say, I make money the old-fashioned way. I earn it. I love it, Jim! This is pretty cool! I earn it. Oh, by the way, I gotta salute the new award. We forgot. The Blow It Out of Your Ass Award. R right the on the... Right on the Palavan Group, the Blow It Out of Your Ass Award is for people that are lying, sacks of shit, that are hypocrites, and, and they go around just bragging and lying about everything. And you'll see it right on the International Brotherhood of Palavan's Facebook group. And of course, this, this will be on YouTube with the link. For people that are real serious about safe, drug-free physical fitness, to join this wonderful uh, group. Uh, unfortunately, all the uh, all the phony baloney fitness groups have, you know, many more members than we do. We just have honest people with integrity, you know. But you, I mean, you can go. You can you know, go. Quick time, we just tell the truth with simple people that that. Tell the truth. We're not looking for material gain here. And other. I'm looking for a complete, fulfilling life. And you know what? When I spend time on this show, yeah. when I go to New Jersey and visit my friend James, and I sit in Dunkin' Donuts for three or four hours <laughs> at a time for, with a two-dollar cup of coffee, that's a million dollars right there. And, and, and you know I'm, what? They have... I'm, Memories. They have real fast internet and they have great coffee and it's a great place for serious. Well, the guy with, with the fat guy, uh, who's a control freak, who puts uh, in his basketball sneakers with dog poop on the bottom of them on the leather couches. But we, you know, well, we can't say. Oh, that. Mr. Cohen with the bitch tits. Yeah. Mr. Bitch tits, Cohen. Uh, he was the, uh, the owner. The owner's son. Anyway, yeah, but I I, I I like the I like the Dunkin' Donuts on Main Street and Lower I better. You know, the, the people are nicer there, and you know, and and, and you can have real serious. Is this Dana Ramsey's gym near Garibaldi Avenue, Route Forty Six? Yeah, 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 he's on. Yeah, it's right by Garibaldi. Yeah, they're both by Garibaldi. Yeah, I like that one. We sit up against the window there. Right, but you can have some. There's a lot of. A lot of people that come in, a lot of good-looking girls come in. The, uh, the the staff is real friendly and real nice, and yep. the, the internet is really lightning fast, and yet you can have some really nice, deep conversations, business meetings, whatever, you know. Um, a plug uh, to, to um, a person I respect very much, that's Daniel Ramsey of uh, New Breed Fitness. A yeah. great, humble <coughs> man who knows his who knows his craft. He knows his craft. There's other great people out there like like William Calvani, Ken Thiessen, Kashi Azad. Ooh, wait a minute. That's when when is that gonna be? Did, that, this month? did that happen already? Kashi Azad in, in, in Connecticut? Yep, and that and that'll be very good and we'll I guess we gotta speak positive, so we'll, we'll keep positive. And but um, uh, anyways. Yeah, if Kashi, um, if Kashi, uh, 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 wish Kashi, I don't expect for Kashi. It will go very well. Listen, I, I just I think that other people book him too. Um, I hope other people. Other people to learn from this great man. I hope other gym owners in in on the entire East Coast. See the light and book Kashi Azad in in their gym. Book Ken Thiessen gyms. too, and book Ken, Ken Thiessen. Opportunity. Book Ken, book Ken Thiessen. Give William Calvani a call. Uh, uh, these are people.
with real knowledge, real integrity. And, you know, don't make Kashi fly all the way back to Sydney, Australia. Book him. Book him. Yep. You know, I mean, the poor guy's on a plane for 30 hours. You know, book him. You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, yeah, I know what it's like to fly five hours. Could you imagine flying like almost 30 hours? But anyway, um, that, that, that should do it. Uh, um, it's, it's after 10 p.m. by you, so I'm going to blow the bosun's whistle. And uh, say, uh, till next time. You still there? Thank you, my brother. Yes, thank you. Here goes. Arr! And welcome to our special physical fitness pirate ship. Till next time. Bye bye. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.